At least six people have been killed in Somalia after an Al-Shabaab militant launched an attack on the local government building in the capital, Mogadishu. Local media reports that a car filled with explosives blew up in front of the building, injuring 16 other people. Officials say there are fears the death toll could rise. <laughs> Relatives mourn for their loved ones in the wake of the explosion. One young woman among those who visited the scene collapsed crying when she came face to face with her mother's body. Witnesses say huge clouds of smoke rose above the city in Hodan district following the blast and gunfire. I was drinking tea when the car hit the gate. I fell down on the ground and saw many other people on the ground. I was shocked. Reports from Mogadishu say a car parked with explosives destroyed the local government's building, causing casualties. Last week, a suicide car bomb destroyed another district office in the capital. The Al-Shabaab militant, which is fighting to topple the government and establish its own rule based on its interpretation of Islamic law, claims responsibility for the attack. In Libya, several armed men have attacked the headquarters of the National Oil Corporation in the capital, Tripoli. Witnesses say security forces clashed with the armed men at the landmark building in the center of the city, and several blasts and gunfire could be heard. A security official at the site said at least two staff members and two gunmen have been killed in the attack. No claim of attack was immediately made. However, in the past, Tripoli has been shaken by clashes between rival armed groups, but the capital has also seen occasional militant attacks. The Central Intelligence Agency in the United States is set to carry out secret drone strikes against Islamic State militants from a newly expanded air base in the Sahara. Local newspaper, the New York Times, quotes unnamed officials as saying the CIA has been flying drones on missions for several months from the corner of a small commercial airport in Niger. Former U.S. President Barack Obama had sought to put the military in charge of drone attacks towards the end of his presidency following a backlash over a series of strikes, some of which led to the deaths of civilians. But under President Donald Trump's administration, the newspaper says the CIA is now moving aircraft Craft to northeastern Niger to target Islamist militants in southern Libya. Joining us now is David Otto, a security expert, to discuss more on this. Hello, David. Hello. What do you think of this new plan by the CIA to step up drone strikes in Africa? I think one of the reasons why the, uh, the CIA wants to step up these drone strikes which has been uh, used since, in, uh, for example, in Somalia since 2003, is because of the recent attacks that the, uh, the, the United States uh, military men suffered in, in Niger, in the village of Tongo Tongo. In that particular attack, um, there was uh, a huge amount of, of uh, uh, a, a late response you know, from the French uh, military. I think that has triggered the United States to, to now adopt a system of expanding the, the drone strikes. But if you look at the countries where these drone strikes have been carried out, uh, Pakistan, Libya, uh, Afghanistan, Yemen, what tells you is that these strikes, which are aimed at targeting leadership and decapitating them, doesn't actually work because a lot of civilians get killed as a result and it becomes a lot more counterproductive. Look at what is happening in, in, in Somalia just today. Um, these drone strikes do exist, but it doesn't actually stop these militants from carrying out the attacks. So do you think this could be a repeat of what has happened in Libya and other countries dealing with militants where there's been joint or U.S. intervention? Of course. You know, uh, the, the, um, uh, one of the fears of actually extending these drone strikes is the fact that um, uh, it would make matters worse. Uh, if you look at the example of, of Libya and you look at the example of Afghanistan and even Iraq, uh, just Somalia next door, it tells you that this actually doesn't work. Uh, the, the, the idea of, of actually putting in drone strikes is itself a defeatist policy because the U.S. doesn't want to risk its soldiers on ground. I think what they should be doing is building the capacity of, of these regions, you know, rather than using these drone strikes to take out leaders, and in the, same, in, in the course of that, 
they take out innocent civilians. A lot of innocent civilians have died as a result. And this is just going to, it's not going to work. So is there any way that this would support against the militant impact in Nigeria, especially in the northeast? Um, that is very difficult to tell. Now, one of the reasons also that I believe the U.S. wants to expand this towards the Lake Chad region is because of the more than 6,000 Islamic State fighters who have now moved towards, uh, towards uh, the Lake Chad region. A lot of them are joining forces with the Islamic State of West African province. That's the Arbanawi faction. We saw the attacks which took place in Gudun Bali and, and, and previous attacks on hard military targets. Now, what is happening is the U.S. is a lot more concerned that ISIS is actually uh, having a strong base in Nigeria and the Lake Chad region. And what they want to start doing is to target these leaders one at a time. But these guys live within the population. They mingle themselves. You know, they are very invincible. If you use drones in order for you to target them, you still need intelligence on ground to actually spot who is this guy and whether there is the risk of targeting civilians within that area. David and, Otto, uh, yeah. security expert David Otto, I wish we had more time to discuss this with you. Thank you for joining us on the program. It's Thank always you. a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, is warning against foreign interference in his country's politics. This is coming days after popular opposition lawmaker Robert Kiagulani, also known as Bobby Wine, called for the United States to suspend military aid over the government's human rights record. President Museveni also accused some unnamed foreign countries of seeking to influence the nation's politics by assisting the opposition through non-governmental organizations. There has been so much talk about the torture by the security forces of people like Honorables Bobby Wine and Zaki. This talk is in the media, in other non-court fora. Yet, these are matters in the courts of law. The questions in the minds of those who love fairness are the following. What if those allegations turn out to be false? How will the accusers, local and foreign, rectify the injustice they have done to the security forces?